Hello, everybody. Thank you all for coming to see our talk today. I think there was a miscommunication. This is where we talk about the mean comments. You're not going to throw them at us. OK? Uh, no, really, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope this week has been as much fun for you as it has for me so far. Uh, hi, my nickname is Dims. Uh, I work with Tim in the Kubernetes community. So um, there was this thing that I started a while ago, and that turned it into this talk. So. Let's see what we have in store for you. Uh, about a year and a half ago, Dims and I started uh, sending each other our favorite comments from various forums, um, you know, as sort of a, a way to vent to each other. Um, we've, we've both often spoken about Kubernetes and how awesome our community is. Um, and I can hear you all now saying, oh, no, it's another big community hug fest. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. Um, our users, you all, are incredible. You're passionate and you are creative. Um, emphasis on passionate. Um, <laughs> every week we hear about somebody who's doing something with Kubernetes that we never would have thought about, that we never could have predicted, that we don't really understand. Which often means that those people find bugs or corner cases or things that we didn't plan for or design for. Um, the reality is, Nobody uses every feature, but every feature is used by somebody. In fact, uh, many of the bugs in Kubernetes have come to be relied upon. Has anybody heard of Hiram's Law? It's a, it's a little saying that says basically, every observable aspect of your system will eventually become part of your API. You can't change things. And it gets to be uh, frustrating. So anybody knows how many open bugs Kubernetes has? Who said that? The answer is about 2,000. Hi, Mo. <laughs> now, I can, oh, that was Mo, I, okay. Cheater. <laughs> so reasonable people might ask, what is wrong with you people? Like, don't you care? I mean, of course we care. We are all working on this system all the time, right? How many people in this room have submitted a pull request to Kubernetes? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. How many people here have submitted an issue against Kubernetes? Uh, that's a lot more. That's even more. Um, and how many of you hit a bug and went, effing Kubernetes? <laughs> so, uh, you know, a huge amount of the work that we do day to day is not just adding features or fixing bugs. So please trust us when we say we hate those bugs as much as you. There is nothing... True. <laughs> there is no feeling like when you do something and it just works, right? But when it doesn't, it can be incredibly frustrating. And hopefully you all file the bug so that we can help to understand the problems. But sometimes you file a bug and you don't get the answer you wanted, which can result in what my kids would call big, feel big feelings. Um, sometimes we get rather strong, passionate interactions on our issues and PRs and social media. So. I want to remind everybody here that everybody who's working on Kubernetes to build and maintain the system are volunteers. Some of us have been around a long time and have developed a thick skin, but some of us have not. And they just want to help people to be successful and to participate. Behind all those GitHub avatars are people. We really, really want to help you fix those bugs, but we need your help. So when it comes to engaging the project and the volunteers behind it, there are, let's say, more effective and less effective ways to engage. So we thought today we would talk about how to engage effectively, um, illustrated by counterexamples. <laughs> so uh, let's see the usual scenarios, usual scenarios for friction, right? Um, so you are running something in production, you have an issue, you, uh, you see something, you copy, uh, you know, and an error message, you come to GitHub, you search, and then you, what do you see? Two years ago, somebody else had the same problem, right? Then the question is like, why, right? <laughs> so, uh, some of this, <laughs> it's been five years, <laughs> somebody do something. Uh, it, it might look simple, but it might, it's probably not simple. 
uh, we have a large user base. Uh, you know, we are probably going to break somebody, Hiram's law, going back to Hiram's law. Uh, we can't always accept like a quick dirty hack to do stuff. Like we are still recovering from things we did 10 years ago. We are trying to unwind those things. <laughs> so uh, even if it is technically simple, um, sometimes we are not able to do it because of some other reasons. We do try to write things down. Uh, there is a lot of discussions in uh, Slack channels and uh, in meetings, SIG meetings and things like that. Sometimes we are not able to reflect that back in the GitHub issue that you're looking at, but I promise you, we've definitely gone through some of these before. Uh, sorry about that, uh, that we didn't reflect it back where you're looking and uh, not finding the answer that you need. Uh, so many years have passed. <laughs> it's easy to ask a question. Um, you know, it's definitely harder to come up with a solution. Now, look at the phrasing itself, right? Like they, right? Like who is they? It's all us, right? Like there is no they here. We are all a community. We all have to do this together. We are all in the same boat. You know, if production fails for somebody, it's gonna fail for somebody else too. So, um, you know, we do have a really good thing called the Kubernetes enhancements process. Uh, please uh, search for it and take a look and see how we can, you know, make it easier, better uh, for you all. Uh, the next one is we have bots. When you come to Kubernetes, we have a lot of bots and the bots interact with you because we are not able to go talk to everybody uh, for every issue all the time, right? So some of the bots go around like cleaning up old issues and like there's no comments from people for a very long time. And like, why is a bot closing my issue, right? So sometimes it is more about, hey, it's not in our backlog, but it is there as an issue. So there is a difference between a backlog where, okay, we are probably gonna work on it at some point, uh, but um, you know, there is issues like this. Uh, there are, we also have issues from um, vendor issues and things like that too. Uh, but mostly Kubernetes, Kubernetes is for development of Kubernetes itself. So please be cognizant of that and use other support channels uh, when you can. Tim? So we get these all the time. The easy response here is PRs are welcome, but that's a little dismissive. The, the deeper response is sometimes it's hard. Few of us on the project are 100% doing this project. We all have uh, carved out as much time as we can, but most of us have other commitments, professional and family, real life. Um, we may not be able to get to as many things as we'd like to. Um, Dim's mentioned the KEP process, the enhancement proposal process. This is how we can move an idea forward. Um, but it's not as daunting as it might sound. If you have an idea, a proposal, you can write a simple doc Google Doc and share it around with your SIG uh, or the, the SIG that owns that problem area. Um, it's a great way to get feedback uh, or use the mailing lists in Slack to collect feedback and help understand why an, an issue is important and why a solution uh, is appropriate. One of the primary reasons why open source is so powerful is because people can scratch their own itch, right? They can do their own, uh, solve their own problems, do their own work, um, convert energy into action um, don't just harvest, but invest. Um, we need to keep this project vibrant over time. We're here at the 10-year anniversary. Uh, let's all pat ourselves on the back. And then what does the next 10 years mean for us? Um, <clears throat> I love this one. <laughs> Reminder, every flag we add approximately doubles the amount of testing we have to do. We have hundreds of flags. We can't just add a flag and run away. Uh, last year, we spent about $4 million on continuous testing and binary serving. $4 million, and that number's only going up every year, month over month, it goes up. Um, when you get that uh, waiting for tests or uh, have to run slash retest because something flaked, that's a bad thing, right? That costs real money. Um, so please don't mistake your convenience with our convenience. Um, I didn't. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so if you have a workaround, 
just make sure that as many people know about it, right? Like, so go to the issue and say, hey, I found, uh, you know, not just you found the issue, but also I found a solution. Uh, here is how you do it. Here is a workaround. Here is something that will tide you over until there is a better fix that is available. Uh, we have a lot of extensions in Kubernetes, right? Um, you know, document your solutions, share them widely. And if you want to go a little bit further, then you can say, hey, do a prototype, file a PR, see which issue, uh, which tests pass or which tissue, tests fail, right? So that is another way you can help us, right? Like we don't know, like we started, started by saying that we don't know all the things, awesome things that you all do, right? So we don't, so it, it will only help us if we know more about the scenarios, adding more test cases, uh, more in, adding more integration tests. Um, you know, there is a backside, a bad side to it too because it raises our cost, but we would rather have it than not have it. Okay, how's this one? <laughs> like, have you all seen this in your own open source projects? Yes? Okay, at least a few people. So, I mean, you can't appeal to shame, right? Um, saying uh, real world and things like that, right? So, uh, not everything is built into Kubernetes itself, right? That's for a reason. How much code can we add into the core Kubernetes? That's why we have extensions. That's why the, the SIG architecture and all the SIGs work together to make sure that there are enough extension mechanisms for, for you all to do the things that you do, uh, that you want to do, right? Uh, and that is the reason why you are all here. We built up a really good, big uh, ecosystem around this. But if you really need something which is not there, we'll figure out a way to work with you on it, right? Uh, just please, you know, we, we don't want to say no to everything all the time either, right? Once we understand your scenarios, once you engage with us a little bit more, then we'll get to know more about your scenarios and then we'll work with you on those things. Uh, extensibility has to be definitely number one on our agenda, uh, you know, uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, so, I'll let you read this for a second. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest thing here is like, just resetting this one number in one place, do you think it's really hard? Right? Um, that's a question. And the number of times uh, that programmatic complexity has stopped us from doing something, you know, is zero. We are not afraid of writing more code. But when we are saying that we can't do something, there are some really deep technical reasons for not doing something. We do want to fix your problem, but not everything can be fixed. We have to make some hard calls. We have to figure out like what can't change right now. It doesn't mean that they can't change forever, right? Like we'll find a better way. Somebody else will come up with a better way to do it uh, sometime later, but it's not the right time to make the change. You know, we might break somebody or, you know, some other scenarios might break. And, uh, but this is not the way you should engage in an open source project to try to change uh, the mind of uh, some of the maintainers. You know, the, the worst part about this one is that up the thread, several maintainers had responded, but, <laughs> but, but OP just didn't like the answers. Um, like, please don't go shopping for approvals, right? We, we kind of talk to each other. We know when this is happening, um, and it doesn't work, right? We have an approval process. We have a consensus building process within the community, and, you know, you're part of the community, but you're not allowed to yell at us. That's not okay. Uh, we do have a code of conduct. We do use it more than occasionally. Um, and if you're not respectful, you, you won't be able to engage with us. We want you here, um, but let's keep it kind, please. I like this one. Really, they had me in the first half, right? I can understand that you're all loaded. Awesome. Rate com commiseration, right? Empathy. Um, that, that acknowledgement is nice. But if it's really a big issue, I imagine it's affecting a large number of people. Where are those other people? Can we have a conversation that talks about the magnitude of a problem, right? I like this one. Um, Dim's uh, pulled this quote out from, from me, so I feel weird quoting myself here. 
Um, but there's always a cost. I've had to post this message many times. There's always a cost. I know it seems like something should be cheap and easy, but there's always a cost. It might not be paid by you, but it does exist. And remember that you know, open source is made of people, and people's time is how we feed it. Okay. Here is another one, right? Like, it feels like you're yelling into the void. Nobody is listening to you, right? Like, you go there and like, you go look at your GitHub issue day after day, and like, nothing is happening. Nobody is acknowledging, and like, you're screaming into the wind. But the thing here is like, we can't go watch all the 2,000 issues, well, 2,000 plus, until the bot starts closing stuff. Uh, the reason is, we do have a release cadence. You, you all know how many times we release in a year, right? How many? Three, three times, okay. Three times a year. What that means is we have a calendar. So we have a feature freeze, we have a code freeze, and then we have a test freeze, and then we make uh, release candidates and things like that, right? So we can't be paying attention to the incoming issues, incoming PRs all the time, right? So there is a cadence in the community. There is a rhythm in the community. There is, uh, you know, for example, when we are fixing deep flakes uh, and like making sure that all the jobs are green before making a release, we might not have time to go look at a big PR that you just logged, right? Or a kept that you just wrote. So uh, if you understand the rhythm of the community, then it becomes easier for you to participate. And then the karma that you get out of like understanding the process and understanding the, what the people are doing and when will help you make friends and you know, it will make it easier for you in the long run. So the other thing here is like you can ask again. So if you don't, you can escalate. Right, like you, if it doesn't work on GitHub issue, if you're not hearing anything from people, come to Slack, right? We have a mailing list. Uh, all the SIGs have the same pattern. They have uh, Slack, they have mailing lists, uh, come to our meetings. We have, uh, you know, meeting notes, uh, throw it on our agenda, you know, make the case, right? Um, and be vocal about what, and when you bring with you data, right? Like in the end, it's the engagement that we are looking for from you, right? Um, so we know what you want, uh, so we can do the right things for you and not guess what you want us to do, right? So you are all part of the Kubernetes team. Uh, so you're part of the solution, essentially. Uh, and it's not just Kubernetes, like all our sister projects face these things too, right? Like look at this one from, for the Helm maintenance. What are we ex exactly accusing people of? Being busy, right? Does it help, right? Uh, and literally, uh, right at the beginning, it says, it's a plea for help, right? Uh, and the person is escalating, essentially. Tim? <laughs> so usually we are our own harshest critics, right? We look at what we've built and we see all the problems and, and it, coming to KubeCon is wonderful because I hear people say good things for once. Um, but when I look at Kubernetes, I just see a pile of 2,000 plus bugs, plus the 2,000 that all, the, got closed by the bot. Um, and, uh, but sometimes we are pretty nice to ourselves by comparison. There's not a whole lot of room for interpretation on this one. Um, and to be fair, Nobody's really in charge, right? So you, you can throw the blame at Google if you like, but it's not really our fault. And people do. <laughs> and they do, um, and that's okay. Um, we have community governance. We have a process that ensures that other points of views are considered and that we build consensus around our decisions and our designs, right? So I don't know what value you get out of posting this in a public forum, but okay. This is another fun one. Uh, I'm not sure that a Raspberry Pi is the right yardstick to be measuring <laughs> Kubernetes with. I mean, I, I like that Raspberry Pi runs Kubernetes, but it's not part of our test suite. Um, do we have bugs? Oh, maybe we should. <laughs> sure, if somebody wants to donate a million dollars worth of Raspberry Pis, we'll be happy to 
<laughs> um, we have bugs, yes. Uh, do we have terrible code? Yes, I probably wrote it, sorry. Um, but I don't know what you expect here, like 11 nines? I, Um, and as far as bug reports go, here's one, somewhat lacking in detail. Um, does anybody know what this is really about? <laughs> Can anybody guess what this is about? <laughs> um, good bug reports are worth their weight in gold, right? <laughs> good bug report is focused. It tells us what happened, where and when, on what version. What symptoms do you see? What platforms were you running it against? Don't just open a bug to vent, please. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Kubernetes has escaped the lab. <laughs> Sorry to tell you all. <laughs> if you hate it, that's perfectly fine. Well, there is also, I did want to say this other thing also. We, we are not actually using tweets which you can see meme and meme netters and other, other things uh, on Twitter. We're just using the things that you know, hurt us more because you are here, you're part of the community and you are engaging with us. You know, th that's why it hurts more, you see? So, uh, but on a different note, as long as people are complaining about it, we know they are using it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's simple. It's... <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> uh, it's, again, it's not Kubernetes that gets beat up. Uh, it, it's... <laughs> Your classic <laughs> send patches. But in truth, the only code bases that are not a mess is that doesn't have any users. <laughs> uh, Tim, thank you. So not every bug is about the code. Sometimes the bugs are about the way the project operates too. Um, perhaps we should open an issue tracker that lets you file bugs against people. Um, I'm pretty sure I'd need a bot to close mine. Um, <laughs> But again, I don't know what the expected outcome here was. Like, do people really think that we enjoy that? Or, or enjoy that we are going out of our way to uh, prioritize flagellating people? Uh, a little empathy goes a long way. You know, and here's a place where um, the commenters sort of working against their own goals. <laughs> I'm a grown man. <laughs> They acknowledge the reason for the decision, good. Uh, but rather than arguing why those reasons are incorrect, they impugn our intentions, right? We're doing this on purpose because we enjoy hurting you. Uh, nobody's trying to make you look crazy, you're doing that on your own. <laughs> this one I liked, it's a little bit long, is fairly polite in its wording, but it clearly comes from a place of frustration. The highlighted text, KEPs exist primarily to prevent improvements from being made without sufficiently flagellating the people who dared to be so brazen as to ask for that improvement. <laughs> like, I, I like it. I would read a book that this person wrote. <laughs> but, you know, we said earlier, it seems simple, but it's really not. Um, I know it feels like KEPs are there to slow you down and to throw roadblocks in your way. Um, I get that. But Kubernetes is not a toy anymore, right? Look around KubeCon and see all the things people are doing with it. Um, a lot of companies and people and livelihoods depend on us not screwing up. Um, and now even lives depend on it as Kubernetes makes its way into really, truly mission critical. I'm not talking about your web store went down. I'm talking about people died. Um, Keps are how we communicate. That's how we share ideas and how we get feedback on them. And, you know, of course, it's a process. Every process could be improved, and, and processes are there to serve people, not vice versa. Um, but let's hear constructive criticism. Um, and for what it's worth, we all follow the rules. Yeah. I have to write caps. Dims has to write caps. A and it's a living document, so we continue to iterate over it as, as things progress. And I, I look around, I see lots of Kubernetes community people here. You all have to write caps, too. I know, you know, yeah. it's not like we're 
beating people up just because they are outside. This one is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, it's a little tight to read. Uh, we have a cap, which is the vehicle for discussing the policy design, blah, blah, blah. You forwarded me to a cap. I posted comments, but nothing happens. You forwarded me to dev null. <laughs> Someone else's cap PR that should cover this. You all don't do anything to address the feedback drawbacks. On top, you come here and close my issue. I want this issue to be open as umbrella, blah, blah, blah. If you close this issue one more time, I will report you. <laughs> so, believe it or not, it's okay to disagree with closing an issue and go ahead and reopen it. Please tell me why. This maybe is taking things a bit too far. <laughs> okay, so having endured all this, and you know, thanks for being a sport and you know, uh, listening to us. So let's do the polar opposite. Um, if you don't like a decision, ask about it. We talked about this a little bit uh, earlier too. If you're not getting an answer, again, ask about it. Uh, and then lastly, People go out of their way to just to say thank you. I mean, we're not asking all of you to go around opening issues, uh, saying thanks, but we'll be, you know, <laughs> when it happens organically, uh, it does make us feel better. Uh, the kind folks, you know, you run kind clusters on all your laptops. So they were so happy when they saw this, right? Like it was totally unexpected, out of the blue, and they were, they're really good people. Uh, Does in anyone in the room use kind? There Wait. you go. <laughs> that was almost everybody. Can, can we just have a quick round of applause for the kind maintainers? An Antonio, get up. Stand up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Find him up after the talk and give him a pat on the back. <laughs> um, so, to end on the kind note, be kind, please. Thank you. We'll be happy to take questions or more insults if you'd like. <laughs>